Hi, I'm Yare and this is Fantastic Realm. Welcome to the show. This week we've got Air, we've got the Dark Avengers, we've got the Armor Wars and many, many more. Stick around. The 13th issue of G. Willow Wilson's intriguing series Air is out this week. This is it. The latest issue of Air sees main character Blythe in Pakistan on the trail of answers. She wants to know what's going on and she meets some interesting characters in Pakistan. I just love the way that this book takes lots of real world occurrences, real world types of characters and weaves them into this ethereal fantasy story. It's very, very difficult to see where the real stuff and the fantasy stuff kind of meet. The blurred edges are just something that's very, very cool about this book. It's also just beautiful to look at. The art by M.K. Perker is really something special in the kind of world of comic books at the moment and the muted colour palette is something I really love about the way this book is realized if you haven't been looking at air it really is something different and special in terms of the way that g willow wilson goes about realizing this story it's on your shelves this week check it out air issue 13 this is issue number nine of war machine as another marvel hero is pitted head to head with Norman Osborn. And James Rode actually manages to elicit an act of benevolence from Norman Osborn, but surely Norman Osborn acting in a kindly and thoughtful way is not something that can last, is it? Issue number nine of War Machine is out this week. This is Blackest Night number three. Jeff Johns and Ivan Rice continue DC's universe-encompassing cataclysmic event. Don't wait for the trade. Pick up Blackest Night in the individual issues because this is the pinnacle of what DC does at the moment. Everything about this is the highest quality that DC can manage. These are the best books in terms of the actual production. They've got the best paper stock the best covers, they've got the best art, the best writers, they have got a epic wide-ranging story featuring humongous amounts of DC characters and in this particular issue number three of Blackest Night not only do we get some more kind of indications about how we got here in this situation, we also get the first inklings of how the heroes of the DC universe might actually begin to fight back against the Black Lanterns. It's serious quality and well worth checking out. It's out now. Written by Jeff Johns, this is Blackest Night number three. This is Dark Avengers number nine and with Brian Michael Bendis on the writing chores, this is one that definitely demanded attention from the stack this week. Against the backdrop of some very strange goings on at the Dark Avengers tower, we get a story in which we share what can only be described as a pretty tender moment between Ares, the god of war, and his son, Alex, as Ares makes a big decision for Alex's future. I love what's happening in this, and I cannot wait to find out what's going on with Norman Osborn in the backdrop of this book. You'll find it amongst the new books out this week, Dark Avengers number nine from Marvel Comics. <laughs> It's our first birthday here at Fantastic Realm. It's been a year since we've been putting these podcasts up for you. And what we'd like to do is thank all of you guys who've been supporting us throughout the course of the past year with a special competition. We've lined up a really great prize. We've got a full set of the Wolverine Appreciation Comics. That is all 16 variant Wolverine Appreciation covers available as a first prize. We've also got five runners-up prizes of Fantastic Realm exclusive variant covers as well. So all you have to do to enter the competition is send me an email to yarei at yahoo.co.uk. That's yarei at yahoo.co.uk. And let me know the answer to this question. 
Scott Pilgrim's one of my favourite series from this year. I'd like to know who's Scott's girlfriend? What's her name? If you can send me the answer to that question, you could win yourself either a fabulous runners-up prize, i.e. one of our Fantastic Realm variant covers, or a full set of Wolverine appreciation covers. That's all 16 comics. So send me your answers. Who's Scott Pilgrim's girlfriend? Email me, yarai at yahoo.co.uk. Good luck. Batman and Robin, issue number four, is out this week. Grant Morrison remains, but without the art of Frank Quietly, will this still be an essential title? Tiny bit disappointed by the absence of Frank Quietly on this only the fourth issue of the brand new Batman and Robin series, but that's mostly because I am a huge Quietly fan, and while he's not here for this, it's not really anything to worry about, as artist Philip Tan is no slouch, and this is still a great-looking book in which Grant Morrison Morrison pits Batman and Robin against the Red Hood and Scarlet, a brutal, vicious, crime-fighting team who are like their polar opposites. How this one plays out is going to be great fun. Batman and Robin, issue number four, out on DC Comics now. Plenty of books for you to sink your teeth into this week. You may want to check out this number 18 in the current run of the Invincible Iron Man. The net is closing on Tony Stark and we find out a little bit about his backup team. They're a bit smarter than we may previously have thought. Fear the Hunters is the current story arc in The Walking Dead. We hit issue number 65 and this story arc is coming to a conclusion. It's been great so far. If you've not been following it, you've got to check it out. Cap Captain America Reborn. This is the series that's going to bring back Captain America from his death. Ed Brubaker, Brian Hitch, Butch Juice are in charge of this one and it's been pretty good so far. If you need a laugh then check out Deadpool Merc with a Mouth. The Deadpools, Dr. Betty, are trying to make their exit from the Savage Land in this particular issue. And The Amazing Spider-Man, one of the biggest series in comics at the moment, hits issue number 605. And judging by this cover, love is most definitely in the air. My thanks to Line of Death on the comments this week. We made sure I didn't miss out this week on this Armor Wars issue number one. Of all of the Ultimate Universe books that have come out in the wake of Ultimatum, this one, Ultimate Armor Wars number one, sets up the scene of the total devastation left in the wake of Ultimatum, the best. Warren Ellis really establishes how much of an effect the ultimatum situation had on the world before launching us into his new Iron Man story, which is pretty classic Iron Man fare in as much as Tony Stark is being cavalier and drinking too much. He's already chasing after the ladies and he has to put down a nefarious upstart who has claimed some of his dangerous toys and is trying to use them for an end that Tony wouldn't agree with. It's really beautifully realised. Art by Steve Kerth is beautiful. The story is compelling and you'll want to follow this if you are into the Ultimate Universe because for my money this is one of the best Ultimate Universe books out so far. Armour Wars, issue number one, out this week on Marvel Comics. So that's pretty much all we've got time for this week on Fantastic Realm. Make sure you get involved in our first anniversary competition because you've got to be in it to win it. Don't forget to keep supporting the people that support us. Their details are running down the side of the screen as I speak. So we'll join you next week. Make sure in the meantime you keep sending us your comments, keep sending us your questions, keep rating us. And if you're feeling the show, let somebody know. Catch you next week. Peace.